Hi, I hope you're all well. Um, today I'll be trying to use some elements of the Ron Ranson method to paint a picture of trees on a heathland, a misty heathland. Um, to start with, I'll, I started with doing some thumbnail sketches, just exploring possible compositions, and I did a tonal sketch, a small one, just using Payne's Grey, um, just to explore the values, um, the lights, the midtones, and the darks. So I'm going to start off with the hake as usual with a light thin coating of raw sienna just to wet the page to um, and to introduce a light amount of tone, more tone around the outside edges. I want it to be quite bright in the middle just to indicate sun through the mist in the sky. <coughs> Excuse me. Just going to start to introduce some mid-tones which um, across the, the mid-ground and around the edges of the sky and here I'm using um, quite a diluted mix of Payne's Grey and Perillion Green. making little adjustments here and there while the paper's wet. While the paper's wet and still got a sheen on it, um, you can make adjustments as long as you're careful and not too heavy handed. You just have to be very careful at this stage not to overwork it. It's very easy to do and I almost do it here but I think I just managed to stop myself in time. Clean damp brush just across the bottom just to clean up that horizon. Give it a slightly misty look as the damp paint will still diffuse down into it. And while the paint is damp, just carefully using the same mixture, uh, put in the shapes of a few distant trees. These should diffuse nicely. If your mixture runs down, just take a clean damp brush and just mop up any spills or drips. Now I'm gonna to start to introduce a bit more color into the foreground. <clears throat> um, using the Hague again, just have to be fairly brave with sweeps of light colour and then a bit later with sweeps of, of pretty dark colour just to try and introduce some dry brush content and some context, some ground for the trees to sit on. You don't have to worry if it gets too dark at this stage. While the paper's nice and wet, you can very, very carefully adjust it with either a damp brush or using a bit of paper towel just to wipe off a little bit of excess paint. Excess paint. Here, I'm just tweaking my foreground a bit. All I want is a simple bank for my trees to sit on. The trees are going to be the focal point of this picture. The bank is just the base for them. Just want to make sure it doesn't dominate too much at, at this stage. I think we're just about there. It's all been done with the hake so far. Just put in a little bit more detail. This is from Payne's Grey, just to indicate where I'm going to have my trees growing from. It won't look quite as stark as that once the trees go in. Um, it'll blend in and I'll add a little bit more colour and a little bit more um, detail to that bank. Grasses, bushes, that sort of thing. Right, I'm going to move into speed painting very soon just to show you how I paint the trees. Um, it takes quite a long time if I do it real time and really it's just a matter of getting <coughs> excuse me the thin branches in the right place with the rigor brush and just carefully painting them and trying to make the trees look as realistic as possible I'm using a number two sable rigger here um, it holds quite a lot of paint so it makes my job a lot easier than 
it used to be with a synthetic rigger. Just going to balance the composition out with a little bit more, a bush and a tree just on the left hand side, excuse me. <clears throat> Still got that lingering cough and cold. Now this is the bit I actually dread the most, back to real time. Um, well, I don't dread it, I just find it is a make or break moment with trees, um, is putting on the leaves. A lot of people paint the canopies and the leaves first. I, at the moment, prefer to, for foreground trees, paint them in afterwards with the hake, starting off with a dilute mix of whatever base colour I want the trees to be and then slowly building up with more paint <clears throat> excuse me darker paint um, just to build up shading in the canopy but it's a fine line it's very easy to overdo it or to be honest it's just as easy to underdo it and then the painting can look flat but if you overdo it it can look flat and muddy which is even worse so I think I'd rather underdo the canopies than overdo them. I'm going to try and get a few darks in just to add shade and shadow. Don't forget the other bushes and trees on the other side if you've got any others there in your painting. I think because we've got some nice autumn colours in the bracken and the ferns on the ground, then I think we'll introduce just a little bit of autumn colour into this, which will be burnt sienna. Um, and I think on the brush I do pick up a bit of cerulean blue, funnily enough, but actually, by mistake, but that actually does introduce some nice pops of colour into the canopy. So I was quite pleased with that happy little accident, as Bob Ross says. Well, we're nearly finished, and I hope you've enjoyed this, um, following the Ron Ransom method to a certain extent, <clears throat> by first trying out lots of little thumbnail sketches um, to perfect the composition, and then doing a small but very important tonal study to find out where your lights and darks will be, um, before moving on to attempting the painting. And this one's literally just been done with the hake brush. I used a medium hake, a large hake, and I think a couple of times a small hake. And then this small rigger, and trying to keep things as loose as possible. Hake painting the Ron Ransom way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you liked it, uh, please um, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then I'd really love it if you did and come and join me on this very interesting journey into learning how to paint with watercolour paint. Thank you and goodbye. See you soon.